the siege of Tiber. Lasting from 27, 32 to 27, 36. The siege of Tiber is remembered today. But the UE's military's heroic struggle to keep Mantul from overrunning the system and the longest unbroken combat engagement between the two forces up to that point. Though Tiber would eventually fall to the Vandal invaders, the UE military doesn't consider the campaign a complete loss. A lot of humanity's collected knowledge of Vandal military strategy and tactics were first learned during those four long, bloody years of battle. Many consider humanity's first contact with the Vandal to have occurred in 2681, when the settlement of Armitage in the Orion system was attacked. A prelude to the sporadic attacks that ensued over the following decades. The combined brevity and ferocity of these attacks often prevented the UE from collecting definitive intelligence about the Vendul. But in 2688, renowned anthropologist Dr. Arlo Gellis, Dr. Arlo Gellis released a groundbreaking study about Vendul social dynamics titled Clan Theory. Dr. Gallus posited that Vandal forces weren't organized under a conventional government, but consisted of clans of various sizes and strengths that could be identified by the markings on their ships. These clans These clans usually operated independently of each other but would occasionally join forces like during the coordinated attack on Orion in 2712 that ultimately pushed humanity from the system. After the defeat, UE forces fell back to Tiber to prepare a secondary defensive line. But the Vandal didn't follow. Instead, they stayed in Orion, harvesting the system for resources. The UEN, the UEE Navy, strengthened forces in Tiber and anxiously watched the jump to Orion, certain that an attack was imminent. Some military historians have claimed the Navy conducted several classified experiments that failed to collapse the Tiber Orion jump. Then, on February 4, 27, 
26. A Vandal Light Fighter. Military designation Blade. Was spotted in the system. Navy forces scrambled to contain the fighter, but it ultimately disappeared. Soon after, the Vandal appeared in increasing numbers, and by the end of the year, small clan raids were happening with erratic frequency, similar to the attacks on Orion. Often months passed without incident. This pattern of engagement lasted until April 19, 27, 32, when a large Vandal clan entered Tiber and attacked UEE forces monitoring the immediate area around the jump. When smaller clans followed, closely behind and joined the fight. UE forces fled and ceded control of the Tiber Orion jump point to the Vanduul. The siege of Tiber had officially begun. Fleet B High Command Assigned Grand Admiral Tesca Halimede the unenviable task of evicting the Vandal from Tiber. While Halimede knew as much, if not more, about the Vandal than anyone else in the Navy, thanks to his in depth study of academic papers and after action reports. He was still considered a controversial choice to lead the campaign. His extensive knowledge was widely respected, but critics characterized Grand Admiral Alamy as a classroom commander who hadn't gleaned any of his knowledge through combat experience. Grand Admiral Alamede first tripled the number of troops guarding the jumps to Virgil and Oberon. Then he docked his ship, UES Aqualon, at the system's largest shipyard, INS Anyin, to defend the jump to Virgil. He kept the capital ships docked at strategic space stations across Tiber. While smaller fleets patrolled as loose guerrilla units, these patrols were given specific instruction on when to engage and when to flee Vandal forces. Rules of engagement varied greatly. Depending on force size and objective. But in practice, the policy usually only advised attacking if the naval force had superior numbers. Ridiculed as a run to gun strategy. Grand Admiral Alamede.
defend that his position by claiming he saved pilots by pushing them forward. Engagement stick could win. This cautious engagement strategy allowed the Vandal to slowly expand their foothold in the system. By mid-2733, Timer 2 had become a fierce battleground, with various clans vying to control space stations and established outposts. Yet, most UE capital ships remain docked in well-defended space stations drawing intense criticism from all, from other generals who felt that the Vandal were entrenching the system. Only in private did Grand Admiral Alameed disclose to his advisors The real reason why he wouldn't commit his full forces against the Vandal. He maintained a hope that diplomacy was the way to end the war. What I need is intelligence and time to figure out how to reach them. The Vandal, he wrote a confidant. If we fully commit to war, then total war is the only path forward. In early 2734, the Vandal began pushing more aggressively on Tiber II. Beds of Vandal harvesters chewing through Diver 2 made it to Spectrum and caused a stir across the Empire, sensing that their overall grasp of the system was slipping. Grand Admiral Alameed responded by finally deploying U.E.S. Aquilon and a large contingent of U.E. forces near the planet. Vandal clans clamoring for a fight eagerly launched the clash with the large fleet. This left Vandal encampment slightly guarded and allowed UE strike teams to carry out aerial bombardments that devastated most of them. Though this was a victory, it also turned out to be a provocation that would not go unanswered. The clans that were devastated by aerial bombardments fled the system. While others arrived to claim what was abandoned. Declassified naval reports indicate that Vandal numbers actually increased after the aerial bombardments of Tiber II. Grand Admiral Alamy dispersed his capital ships to try and repeat the success. He would use ships as decoys to bait clans into chasing them around the system, while strike teams hit targets exposed by the distraction. Intelligence gathered and battle tactics first tested during this time greatly advanced the military's understanding of the Vandal. The Navy even reclaimed several lost space stations, 
though it would prove to be too little, too late. In November 27, 35, Naval Intelligence received word of a large Fandul clan amassing in an unexpected part of the system. Grand Admiral Halamede gathered a small force around UES Aquilon and went to assess the situation personally. He discovered the Vanduul pouring through a previously unknown jump point. To the system designated Vector right around the same area that initial Vandal scout ship had disappeared years ago, moments after arriving. The recon team was discovered and ambushed. Vandal forces destroyed UES Aquilon, killing all aboard, including Alamy. The few surviving ships limped back to INS Annie Lost Cause The Loss of Grand Admiral Alamy Sent to Navy Scrambling and High Command appointed Admiral Mira Triolo, a staunch critic of Alamy's measured engagement strategy. As the new commander in Tiber. The new admiral consolidated her forces into a huge fleet meant to directly challenge the Vandul. Her first major encounter resulted in the loss of thousands of starmen and three capital-class ships. Undeterred, Admiral Triola continued to confront the Vandal directly. And, in a move that would later draw much scrutiny, ordered the redeployment of reinforcement from Virgil to bolster her off in 27. 36. The war for Tiber would reach a fever pitch. Imperator Galor, Messer Knight, personally ordered a massive campaign of aerial bombardment on Tiber too. Convinced that controlling the planet would limit the Vandal's ability to resupply their war machines. Instead, turned the planet into a wasteland and turned it to epitaph too. Then, on December 29th, 2736, a Vandal capital class kingship arrived from Orion, identified as one of the largest and oldest clans that had been documented by the military. The kingship led an attack on the INS Annie, despite a valiant resistance. Half of all Navy forces in the system were lost during battle, with the naval line broken and their ships routed. Admiral Triolo ordered forces to fall back to Virgil. Admiral Triolo assumed the Vandal would remain in Tyburn. To rip apart the system as they did in Orion, but the Vandal followed instead. In 
they took control of the Tiber Virgil jump point and sent scouts across the system. Only a few days later, on January 2nd, 2737, the vast Vandal fleet pushed into Virgil. Admiral Triola managed to slow its advance, buying precious time to cover the retreat of over one million refugees. But Virgil soon fell. The Siege of Tiber may be best remembered as a failed military campaign to save the system. Yet, many consider it an invaluable time in the war against the Vandal. Thanks to the lessons learned during the siege that are still being put to use today.